So, we have done six civs so far, and now we're going to be going on to the, uh, <laughs> the sad child of AoE4, the Delhi Sultanate. So the Delhi Sultanate is, of course, going to be our Indian civilization, and uh, they the game says they last from 879 to 1526. I couldn't find anything but with the 879, uh, you know, with the cursory internet search. So, yeah, definitely let me know in the comment if there's anything special about 879. Uh, but 1526 is the end of the Delhi Sultanate. That one's nice and easy, because that is when uh, Babur shows up with uh, what would eventually become the Mughals. Uh, then you get into AoE 3 land. The Delhi Sultanate is considered a three-star difficulty civilization, or a hard difficulty civilization, and uh, yeah. This is a very tricky Civ to play, guys, which is probably why it's not super popular, especially uh, in comparison to Chinese and uh, Mongols especially. So yeah, I'll uh, I'll explain what's going on with the Civ in just a uh, just a minute. The game classifies them as focusing on military, research, and defense. Uh, these two make perfect sense, as I'll get to uh, in just a minute. Military? I have no idea what this means. Like, isn't every Civ focused on military? Because you kind of need that to win the game. I don't know, but yeah, definitely research and defense. So before I just go on to the basic Civ bonuses, I do want to talk about their influence system because it's just so important to how the civilization functions. So influence. Buildings constructed within the influence of a mosque or, or madrasa benefit from faster research speed based on how many scholars are garrisoned. So the scholar is a unit built from the mosque, which is available in Dark Age, and uh, it's essentially just a monk. It, it's pretty much just a monk. And it will improve the research speed of your technologies. This is important because Delhi gets every single technology for free. They don't have to pay for any technology except aging up. However, they research things really, really slowly. It's really painful, honestly. It's like six, seven minutes for most technologies. So it's critical that you have your scholars garrisoned in your mosques and madrasas to speed things up, because otherwise you're just not getting anything. And it's actually a detriment instead of a, a bonus, because you'd rather just pay for the tech and then get it, you know, in 45 seconds to a minute as opposed to getting it for free, but in six minutes. So getting those scholars in your mosques and madrasas is just absolutely critical for the civilization. You can see that it is going to lend itself to a more defensive late game play style, because, you know, you can get a very fleshed out tech tree, get strong military options with your elephants and whatnot. I'll get to that later. But it's just so, so critical that you get that mosque early on, get those scholars garrisoned, and just at least get your technologies researching semi, sort of, faster a little bit. But yeah, that is the main mechanic of Delhi. It is why they are a very difficult civilization to play, because it feels like you don't have many aggressive options, and it's just more focused on hanging in there until you can get to your late game army with like all of your uh, different researches with your technologies and stuff. So that's sort of the basic idea of Delhi, and I'll sort of uh, get into the more specific mechanics as we get into this uh, video. Now, Delhi actually doesn't have that many Civ bonuses. Uh, we have Gather from Berry Bushes 25% faster, but cannot gather from Boar. This is because the uh, Delhi Sultanate is uh, Muslim, and the uh, most of the population uh, would be Hindu, and neither of which eat pork. So yeah, no, no Boar, but you do gather from Berry Bushes 25% faster. And there's also, it says right here, cultivate berry bushes into orchards by building mills near them. I'm not sure what this means, uh, but when you do collect from berry bushes with Delhi, uh, the food capacity goes to like 400 something as opposed to 250. So it, you do get more food and you do collect it faster. Uh, but yeah, really, the, the story is you get more food from berry bushes, which is pretty nice because you're going to have berry bushes close to your TC in early game, whereas the boar are going to be further away, and even then it takes a lot of villagers to bring down a boar, so it's going to be pretty helpful in early game. You have your scholars available from the Dark Age, as well as the, uh, the technology thing, which I already talked about. Infantry units are able to construct defenses, which is a pretty nice bonus for Delhi, considering that you are going to have that more defensive playstyle due to your technologies taking a while to research but being free. And here, infantry actually means uh, barracks units and archery range units. They both technically count as infantry. And when it says defenses, it just means palisade walls and palisade gates. So uh, no stone walls or outposts, uh, but you can actually get stone walls uh, with one of the landmarks, which I'll get to later. But yeah, this is just a nice little bonus early on. If you think you're getting rushed by knights because you're facing French, then you can just go for some spearmen early on, construct some walls for you, and that can just help you stay alive. But their final bonus is that fishing ships are equipped with an archer. Okay, the Civ is not French or maybe Rus on water. 
it doesn't matter. But yeah, those are the only bonuses for Delhi, and I think we can see already that this civilization just feels kind of lacking something. It just doesn't feel like there's all that much going on other than their, their big mechanic of the, the scholars and the, the researching. But because that isn't always a bonus, and it's kind of slow to get going, and the infantry building defenses thing is, it doesn't help you get ahead, you can see why the civilization just isn't very popular. It's just hard to, you know, keep up with so many of the faster civilizations in the game. But moving on to their unique units, there are actually three with this civilization. There are two elephant units, even though it says that there's only one, and you have the scholar. Uh, I do want to mention already that the scholar when you build a mosque, it's only 100 wood, and you get one scholar for free, which is pretty nice. But also, you can garrison up to three scholars in a mosque, and you can actually garrison up to, I believe, 30 scholars in a madrasa, which is, like, insane. You don't need that many. The really important thing to note here with this uh, influence system is that it needs to be within the, uh, the influence to get the technology speed boost. So you want to make sure you're planning your cities very well, make sure that all of your buildings that research technologies are within that influence. It's nice though because you're able to spread the influence with more buildings. It's kind of like the Holy Roman Empire uh, influence system with their defensive structure thingy, uh, quick repairs or whatever it's called. So you can spread things out and the mosques and madrasas do give you sort of an extra radius as well. So it's not that hard to make sure that everything is, uh, you know, within the influence system, but it's really important to do so. Also, even though a mosque can only garrison three scholars, it is absolutely critical that you have either multiple mosques or you just get your one madrasa in late game and then you can just garrison everybody in there. Um, and then each garrison scholar uh, will stack on top of each other and you can get a plus 12.5% research speed for each garrison scholar. So eventually you will be actually researching technologies faster than other civilizations. Like once you get like 15 scholars garrisoned, then it's like you're researching techs for free and almost instantly. So late game, the civilization is incredibly powerful because you can just get like the entire tech tree. You know, what's stopping you? Now, of course, for the big elephants in the room, we have our two elephant unique units. So first we have the Tower War Elephant at the archery range. Notably, uh, these guys, you can start making them in Castle Age. Uh, same with the War Elephant. But you can't upgrade them to like an elite version. So you just have to get all of your uh, upgrades for just the basic unit. Also... Uh, they cost three population space because they're big, chunky elephants. So definitely keep that in mind. I'll put the stats on the screen, of course. And I actually just had the benefit of doing a lot of testing for both the Tower War Elephant and the regular War Elephant uh, with T-West for an upcoming Viper video. Yeah, we've, we've actually had a lot of sort of different interactions that we were able to explore with both of these units. And I'm just going to tell you right off the bat that Tower War Elephants are not very good. Like, they are really not very good. They don't trade very efficiently versus most anything. Their damage is just very low. It does have a couple of archers mounted on top, but you just don't do enough damage for how many resources you're paying, and you'll just die to crossbowmen, you'll die to knights. I guess you'll do fine versus archers, but you're not going to really want to be using archers against elephants anyway. The spearmen will kill you, knights, camels, all that stuff will kill you. Uh, yeah, not really the best unit in the world. Uh, but still, if you're looking for something that's very population efficient, uh, you know, you get a bunch of these guys. I mean, it is three pop space, but still, it's not like the worst unit ever, but I wouldn't really uh, consider making them in like a very serious game, at least not on the current patch. As disappointing as that may be, we have the War Elephant, which is the, the melee version, and these guys are actually really strong. Uh, they will just, <laughs> you know, wreck pretty much everything, except for infantry. This is actually more of a counter cavalry unit. It gets a bunch of bonus damage versus cavalry, as you can see on your screen. However, they don't deal trample damage, so spearmen and even men-at-arms will be able to, you know, deal with them quite effectively. So when you're making your war elephants here, yes, they're going to be great versus buildings, they're going to be great versus cavalry, but you're going to need to want something that's anti-infantry uh, behind them, like maybe crossbowmen or something. But yeah, you know, here it's a, it's a very expensive, big, chonky unit like the AOE2 War Elephant. You're not going to be able to see these guys until late game, but of course in late game they are going to be a very deadly option, especially because Delhi, again, you're more focused on getting to late game. Oh, I almost forgot to mention, technically their fishing boats count as a unique unit because they fire uh, arrows. Uh, but yeah, like I said, doesn't matter. But yeah, those are the unique units of the Delhi Sultanate. Pretty much you just have your scholars for your main uh, mechanic with the civilization, and then you have elephants, and that's kind of it. There really isn't a whole lot going on. 
other than, you know, just your elephants and scholars. And again, it just feels like there's something missing with the civilization. You know, elephants don't come into the picture until late game, and scholars are just a, you know, you're in, they're in your base most of the time. So you're really looking at fairly generic units. Uh, of course, we do have your unique text, which can help out a little bit, but uh, yeah, let's just dive into those and see exactly what they are going to be bringing to the table for the Delhi Sultanate. So right off the bat, at your mosque, you have Sanctity, which uh, I already showed you briefly earlier. It allows scholars to capture sacred sites before Castle Age. You can get this in Dark Age. And uh, sacred sites generate plus 100 uh, gold, which is pretty darn nice, actually. It is one of the stronger aspects of the civilization, because you can just send out, send out a scholar and just capture your sacred site. And it's going to be, you know, just a lot of extra gold income early on. Pretty nice. But this one is super important. Uh, ignore the food and gold cost. It doesn't cost anything. This is just an error in the tech tree. Allows scholars to garrison in military buildings, boosting production speed by 100%. This, like I said, super important technology to pick up because in early game, you're going to need this to stay alive. It's pretty similar to the boost of the Imperial official for Chinese, although not quite as strong. But still, getting your spearmen out 100% faster, archers, horsemen, whatever you want. Because you don't really have that many economic or military bonuses early on, just having that extra production speed is just going to be critical to, you know, not dying to stuff. So especially if you're up against, say, French, because that's what you're <laughs> mostly up against these days, getting a barracks, garrisoning it with a scholar, and just pumping out a bunch of spearmen can be really helpful in just staying alive. In Feudal Age, you get the All-Seeing Eye, which increases the sight range of scholars by 100%. Sure, it's Delhi, all the techs are free. In Castle Age, you have Swiftness. Again, ignore the actual price tag. It doesn't cost anything. It increases the movement speed. Always nice to have a movement speed on a unit that is uh, slower. And then in Imperial Age, you actually get Zeal, which increases the attack speed of units healed by the Scholar by 50% for three seconds. So it's like you're in uh, an upgraded version of the English network of castles. At the barracks, uh, I'm just going to mention that other than being able to build defensive structures, everything is completely generic. So nothing nothing too crazy here. Uh, just, again, you can use your infantry units to build defensive structures. And, you know, they do their job, right? <laughs> I should mention that at the dock, yes, they do have a unique tech, which is called Patchwork Repairs. Increases the repair rate of fishing ships by 100%. But that doesn't matter because you're getting wrecked by hulks anyway. Or uh, the Lodia attack ships. Delhi actually does have a unique tech available at the blacksmith called Forced March which infantry units gain the Forced March ability. This ability makes them move 100% faster for 10 seconds, but they cannot attack while it is active. So this is kind of a tricky ability to use, as it can be quite helpful in either outmaneuvering your opponent, getting reinforcements you know, to the front lines faster, but you need to make sure that uh, you do it when you're well out of combat, because the last thing you want is your units running, running around and then not able to attack anything. At the archery range, you have the Siege Elephant, a unique tech in the Imperial Age, which upgrades the Tower Elephants to have elite crossbowmen as riders instead of archers. So they will be getting some extra bonus damage against heavy units, because that's what crossbowmen do versus archers. Uh, but still, like I said, Tower War Elephants, I just haven't really seen them be that great versus much anything. So yeah, this is it's only going to be a little bit of a minor boost. However, at the stable, you have a much more useful tech with Armored Beasts, which grants plus two armor to War Elephants and Tower War Elephants. It's plus two armor. It's good. Elephants have a lot of armor anyway, but just stacking that up even more is just makes them even chonkier. As they are a defensive civilization, it shouldn't be surprising that they have some defensive upgrades at the keep. We have Slow Burning Defenses increases the fire armor of stone walls, towers, and keeps and outposts by 10, which... Although it doesn't apply to every building, that's still really nice, because in case you don't know what fire armor is, uh, pretty much every melee unit does fire damage to siege units and buildings. So this is like, versus melee units, you get 10 extra armor, which is a lot, obviously. So, I mean, it's it can be nice to pick up, and it makes your uh, keeps that much more difficult to take out. Then you have village fortresses, which keeps act like town centers, including unit production, population capacity, and technology. Not too sure what the technology thing is, but uh, unit production, it means you can make villagers and scouts from your keeps, which, sure, why not? Keeps come in pretty late, so you'll likely have multiple town centers by that point anyway, but hey, it's one more town center. So those are the unique techs of Delhi. Again, you have sort of have an array of elephant and defensive boosts. However, there are a few more techs hidden in the landmarks, which I will get to right now. So for Feudal Age, you have the choice between the Tower of Victory and the Dome of the Faith, the Tower of Victory is melee and ranged infantry who move near this landmark gain permanently 15% attack speed. To be honest, this one's kind of clunky, as it's like, okay, you can get the extra attack speed, but that's only for units that, 
you have to like run by it. And I almost never see this one utilized because the Dome of the Faith produces scholars at minus 50% cost, so only 75 gold apiece. And because you really, really, really need to get those scholars out as quickly as possible, then uh, this is the one that I would definitely recommend going for in almost every situation. In Castle Age, you have, again, two options. You have the Compound of the Defender, which is infantry units can build stone walls, gates, and stone towers, and it reduces the cost of buildings and their emplacements by 25%. So this is a nice defensive boost and can be really helpful if you're under a lot of pressure as you can just use your infantry units to just get out those stone walls as quickly as possible. Stone walls are very difficult to take down in AoE for its uh, counterpart, I guess. The House of Learning is sort of your more greedy, late game oriented landmark because it grants no immediate bonus but contains a bunch of unique technologies. So there are several more here. So just from the House of Learning, you cannot get these anywhere else. You have Reinforced Foundations which gives an extra five maximum pop space to your houses and town centers, sure. Tranquil Venue, which has your mosques heal nearby friendly units, which is nice. Lookout Towers increases the sight range of outposts, sure. Uh, but the nice ones are in Imperial Age, you have Hardy Rations, which increases the carrying capacity of villagers by plus five, which I imagine it boosts your farming rate like it does in AoE too. To be honest, I'm not entirely sure exactly what this does, but uh, I imagine that it's good for your eco. Then you have Honed Blades, which increases the melee damage of your men-at-arms and lancers, not knights, um, by three. So it's like getting an extra version of every single attack upgrade at the blacksmith. So that's definitely a nice attack to get as well. Finally, in the Imperial Age, you have two choices. You have the economically focused Hisar Academy, which constantly generates food based on the total number of technologies researched. As you can imagine, you're researching a lot of technologies with the civilization throughout the game, and you also require a ton of food for your army. So it's honestly a pretty nice landmark. Uh, I don't know why it's called a tech... I guess it's based on your technologies research, but it, it generates food for you. Uh, it doesn't do anything else. So yeah, this can just be a nice supplement to your food income in the late game. The more military-focused option, I don't know why this one's a religious landmark, I guess because you can garrison scholars, but it produces tower war elephants for you constantly uh, for free. And you can garrison four uh, scholars to improve the production speed. But like I said, tower war elephants aren't very good, so I would honestly recommend the Hizar Academy. So yeah, those are the landmarks with Delhi. You have some nice options for sure, but everything is just focused on defending, getting to late game, and then sort of pushing out from there with a very well upgraded and uh, I guess diverse army that is uh, supported by your elephants. Unfortunately, that's kind of it as far as your, your strong military options go. And as good as that is, it's not like Delhi is disproportionately better than like all of the other civs in late game. I mean, yeah, it is a good late game civ, but you know, there are also a lot of other really good late-game civs that are faster, like French, like Rus, like uh, even Abbasids. Chinese as well. Chinese are probably better than Delhi. So, yeah, it's it's a little bit awkward. I, I do think that this is probably the weakest civilization in the game right now. It's not bad, but I do feel like it's a little bit outclassed, overshadowed by the other civs in the game. Definitely, like, try the civ out if you want. If you think that this sort of thing appeals to you, you know, if you like elephants, if you like defending, then by all means, go for the civ. It's... Still a competitive option, uh, but just know that you are going to really be uh, on the back foot, I guess. Uh, at least sort of when it comes to map control compared to most other civs, at least in early to mid game. Um, oh yeah, I almost forgot. Uh, their wonder is the Great, Pal Palis? Great Palace of Agra. But yeah, that's going to be the Delhi Sultanate, guys. Uh, hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned something. Uh, and I will see you guys next time for our final civilization.